Hello, my name is Tony Berard, and today we're going to talk about uh, dice chess and chess. And uh, we'll see how far we get. All right, first I'm going to discuss uh, some of the special case rules in chess. Uh, one of them is castling. Uh, I've written about this in my writings before, but if you haven't read my writings, and very few people have, <laughs> unfortunately for me, uh, <clears throat> I discuss these things. And so, uh, here I have a chess set, and uh, the typical opening moves are uh, pawn to king 4, or e4, and then maybe something like e5, and then we get a knight out or something, and maybe the other side might put a knight out, and then we might get um, say this. Now, White is doing this because White is trying to occupy and or control the center of the board. As the piece is developed, you have an eye towards controlling the center of the board. That's where all the important lines are. Uh, but doing that exposes the king. The king lost a major part of his cover. And so, let us say black does this, captures, and then white might capture back with the knight, certainly not the queen, because the knight would capture the queen. And then, let's say just for laughs, black does that, and white does this. So now, uh, the pawn cover in front of the king is ruined, but something magical is going to happen very soon for white. Uh, let's say black does this. White might bring the bishop out, let's say, to here. Black might do this, attacking this pawn. It's not really much of an attack. Pawn can just advance, and then black has to move again, the knight. So that would be a bad opening move. Black might do that, which is getting away from my point because of my bad play. But anyway, the next move that white might make, other than pushing g4, attacking the knight again, which might well trap it, uh, we're going to say white castles. <laughs> white castle. That's a fast food restaurant here in America. Anyway, so white castles. And now the king is tucked into the corner. The rook gets to move to the center of the board. And white gets a pawn uh, structure in front of his king again. So that accomplished two, two objectives. One objective is having the uh, pawn structure in front of the king, and the other objective was to control the center. Without castling, this king would be stuck in the center, and uh, so then it would be a real problem. Could white go after the center? White would have to not do that if white wanted to keep the pawns in front of the king for protection later on in the game. But the castling move allows the uh, king to have this structure in front of him. And so, something is wrong with the castling move. It allows two pieces to move on a turn, which in and of itself isn't bad, but all the other turns in chess only get one piece to move. And so this move violates the basic protocol established in the rest of the rules. And so as such, I call this kind of move a patch-up rule. It fixes a couple of the problems in chess. One is the king is stuck in the center, and we need to fix that. And the other is that uh, we would desire to control the center. That is a good game objective. And so castling resolves these. Uh, there's some attendant 
um, rules this with the stipulations of castling you can't castle while you're in check why is that I've written about this extensively but uh, the reason is the rule changers back in uh, whenever they created the castling rule hundreds of years ago uh, they decided that uh, castling is a privilege and if your king is in check then you lose that privilege the king gets to move when in check so why not castle castling is just a special type of move but anyway that I didn't create the castling rules and its stipulations but I can critique them from the modern day perspective and so the castling rule has a bad stipulation in that uh, it's forbidden to castle while you're in check in my uh, game fighting chess I got a I got rid of that stipulation you can castle now while you're in check you can castle across a check and you can even castle into check because I stripped the king of its inviolateness uh, but anyway so fighting chess is an upgrade to chess in the sense that the at least the castling rule stipulations have been removed and so uh, the patch up rule includes some stipulations that are bad and at least I improved those stipulations in fighting chess. Uh, so that's that. Then we have this other situation. I can use the same position. Suppose uh, a pawn is on the fifth. Uh, black can advance this pawn two squares, violating the uh, capture possibility of this pawn. And so the rule changers back whenever this rule was created, they said, well, on the next turn, the pawn can capture onto that square as if the pawn had only advanced one square anyway. And that type of rule is called capture and passing. So it's passing over the capture square and capturing onto it because it passed over the capture square. So that's how it got its rule. It has a French name, I believe. It's called en passant, which I don't know if it means in passing, passant, passing, P-A-S-S, P-A-S-S. -S. Probably they mean the same word in two different languages. All right. So those are two of the uh, patch-up rules in chess. I don't really agree with the capture and passing rule. My own thought is that... If you have a pawn on the fifth, well, it shouldn't be there. It's in the opposing camp. Why should it get the benefit of uh, this extra rule allowing it to capture? It's to me that's a uh, a non-situation. It shouldn't have gotten a rule, but it did, and I didn't change that situation in fighting chess. I allowed it. So uh, fighting chess has the capture and passing rule intact. I didn't change a thing about it. All right. The other rule is once all the pieces get traded off and we get down to the end game where there's just a king and a pawn. Let's say we got a king. Let's say, let's make it easy for white. So black goes, white goes, black goes, and then white goes. So white would, of course, take a queen, and now it's a much more powerful piece. From a pawn to a queen, you know, is quite the upgrade. And now these two pieces together can forcibly checkmate this lone king. So uh, this is called queening a pawn. You can also under-promote in chess, you know, some positions. If you uh, take a queen, it might be a stalemate, you know. So uh, sometimes, you know, under promotions occur. But anyway, that's the idea. When you push the pawn in, you can promote it to a more powerful piece. All right, so those three situations, capture and passing, uh, the castling rule, and promoting, have all been dispensed with in dice chess. So uh, let's talk about dice chess. I'm going to pause the video for a moment and get set up for that.